Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Bircher Paint Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Waterfall Oasis and I'm going to be sipping on some chamomile tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, Mars black, deep yellow, fluorescent pink, green oxide, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And of course, you can certainly switch up those colors if you'd like to. Uh, for my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number seven round synthetic brush. And I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. Uh, if you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be drawing a very simple outline of our landscape. I'm gonna be using my pencil and I'm really just gonna be separating my cliff rock formation landscape area from my sky and from my water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a couple of markers and we'll just connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have a few sections that'll be a starting point for the painting process. So on the right hand side of the top of my canvas, I'm gonna come down about three or four inches somewhere in this vicinity, give myself a little bit of a marker. And then up in the top left hand corner, I'm gonna make myself a marker up in through there. I'm gonna connect these two with a kind of a slopey type of um, landscape or line. I'm gonna have it kind of flattened in the center area, that's where my um, waterfall is gonna go. So I'm gonna start up here and then maybe just bring this down into a little rocky area, travel kind of straight across, and then I can start giving myself a little um, bumpy type of area where the um, side of it's gonna go, and then it's just gonna kind of disappear up here in the top left-hand corner. Yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine, just some sort of relatively flat area where you're gonna have your waterfall coming um, out is total, it will help you through the process. And then at the bottom, on the bottom right-hand side, I'm gonna come up maybe about three inches or so, make myself a little bit of a marker, and then on the left-hand side, I'm about the same height over on the left-hand side. I'm gonna connect these two, but I'm gonna give it a little bit of an arcing type of a motion. So I'm just gonna kind of come over in through here and just give it a little bit of an arc. I don't want much because I want it to kind of look like it's going back into this little cove of sorts. And that's all I'm gonna do for my outline. I'm gonna be using my large brush for the next step. So when you're done, you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our sky and our base coat for our water. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are blue, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a really pretty like tropical aqua type of color. And I'm gonna be utilizing that as the base for my water. And I'll also utilize it in my sky as well. So I've magically pre-mixed myself my color that I'm looking for. So you can see where I'm kind of headed with it. How I got to that was I mixed blue, with some yellow. 
So the yellow is going to, maybe I can turn this a little bit. The yellow is going to make this in, <laughs> if you'll just keep it where I had it. <laughs> the yellow is going to make this into a really pretty, like, um, tropical teal type of aqua color. And then once you've got it into the color that you want, you can add a tiny bit of white paint to it and that's gonna lighten it up just a little bit. You can have this as blue or as green as you want it. You'll probably find a color that is pleasing to your eye. And once you've established that color, you just gotta make enough of it. So I'm gonna make myself just a little bit more here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna color in our water with this color. So I'm just kind of pre-mixing myself a little bit more so I make sure that I have enough of it. And then for my water, we're gonna be doing just a base coat on the water. Later, we will be adding all kinds of other information and detail to it. But right now I'm just using that pre-mixed color and I'm going to just kind of paint the entire bottom section with this color in through here. Once I have this on, I'm not doing any special brush stroke, just really kind of getting that color on there. And then once I've got it on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel so I have a, a little bit of this blue left on my um, brush. I'm going to then pick up some white paint. So I have white with a little bit of the remnants of that um, custom blue on there. I'm gonna start at the top of my sky. So I have it really nice and light up at the top kind of center of the sky. And then I'm just gonna kind of work my way out towards the um, horizon line. In a second, I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more of the white plus my blue. So white plus my custom blue to get down towards the bottom edges of the sky where as it's kind of meeting the land, you can go right up to your land, bump into your, your pencil mark. You don't need a lot of paint and you don't even, um, I went over my pencil mark there so I couldn't see it. You wanna make sure you can still see your, your pencil mark for later, um, but if not, I guess you can just make a new one. Um, so I'm getting a little bit darker at the bottom, lighter at the top, so I've got some a nice, a nice sunshiny kind of transition and it color coordinates with the bottom with the water down at the bottom so it makes us feel like we are in a tropical oasis somewhere and I don't have a lot of paint on my brush just kind of manipulating it so it is nice I just picked up a little bit more white to get the sun area a little bit brighter and then once you've got it in the way that you want we will be utilizing the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for our land. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using black paint only. So there is not gonna be anything tricky to this for the middle section, but when you get down to where it meets the water, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of overlap it a little bit along that edge so I have kind of a soft edge from the, um, from the land working its way into the water. So I don't have like a, a crisp line. So as I'm working my way down towards here, I'm going to take my black paint and just kind of overlap it just a little bit over that um, blue color. So that way, one, I don't have a gap between them. And two, it makes it look like they are just kind of gently transitioning from one into the other. And then you can just kind of lightly go back and forth. If your blue is still wet a little bit, that's fine. Just kind of paint it into the, into the black. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that this entire section is painted with black. Um, black is a really good covering paint, so you'll most likely only need to do one coat as you go through this section. Um, but if you did find that you wanted to do, you know, you missed some spots or whatever, you can come back and do a second coat on it. As I get up towards the horizon line, I'm going to be having the um, this land area is going to be a whole bunch of different stuff. We're going to have trees and bushes and we're going to have our waterfall going across. So this upper line does not have to be perfect. You just want to kind of make, you know, have it go all the way up to your sky. You can make any adjusting kind of um, 
formation type of marks that you want. If you want it to look like there's some sharp rocks, you can certainly do kind of clean edges to it. If you want it to look like there's going to be like a bush or something in through here, you can do really soft edges to it. So you can really make those edges into whatever you want. But with that being said, they're going to be hidden a lot underneath the other um, aspects of the of the land up here that we're going to be doing like where your waterfall is that's all going to be covered with additional paint so you don't have to worry how perfect that is and then again just kind of make sure that you have a nice good coverage and then once you've got this done we're actually going to be uh switching to our mm, actually no we're going to use this large brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this large brush Get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second layer of our water. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I do wanna forewarn you that you wanna make sure that your water area is dry before you start the step. It'll be much easier for you. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some, oops, you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do it as I did, and you can just whip out a blow dryer to get it dry that way. So what we're in essence going to do is we're going to make the bottom corners of our water area darker and get it to go a little bit lighter as it moves towards the center of the water. I don't want it to go all the way white yet because that's going to happen with the um, waterfall splashes but I do want it to appear as if the brightest area is kind of in the center. So I'm going to be using black. I'll use a little bit of my green, maybe some of my cobalt blue, and then maybe some of my custom blue and a little bit of white perhaps. But I'll call out the colors as I'm going to use them. So I'm going to start with a very little bit of black paint on my brush and I'm going to gently kind of pull it in these corners of the bottom of my canvas. So I don't have a lot and I'm just kind of pulling it in that water just a little bit. So I'm in essence kind of creating this um, kind of dark little edges to my water area. Now I'm going to pick up some green paint, my green oxide without washing my brush. If you had a ton of black on your brush, you may want to wash it. Um, prior to putting this green on here, but if you just had a very little bit, you can get away with just kind of intermingling the both together and then just kind of pulling it in towards my, my water, maybe bringing it up in this area a little bit. All these little colored nuances are going to make for a really nice kind of secluded oasis kind of encapsulating the water. I think I want to bring a little bit more black but down here so I just picked up a touch more black. I really want these edges to look nice and dark so that will help out with that making sure that this is nice and kind of blended in. Now what I'm going to do is I, I am washing my brush because I picked up some black there but if you just still have the green on there you can get away with just picking up a little bit of your cobalt blue and getting that to blend in. So I'm just kind of working my way towards the center of the um, of the water, which would be somewhere in through here, with a gradient of these real tropical-y type of watercolors, allowing it to look like it kind of just blends right in towards that center, bringing a little bit of this blue up in through here. And now I'm going to pick up my um, my watercolor, oh, I had a little bit of green on my brush there, my watercolor, that um, custom color that we created with a teeny tiny bit of white. And when I say teeny tiny bit, I'm really just talking a teeny tiny touch on there because the white will really easily overpower. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of this lightness in through this area in through here. And that's all I'm going to do for this layer of the water. You could certainly tweak yours a little bit more if you wanted to. If you felt like you overdid any of the colors, you could certainly just bring that original water color in and just kind of overlap it a little bit. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So you can put the large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint ourselves some rocks. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are primarily brown, black, and white, but I might throw in a little bit of yellow or pink. 
maybe, I'm not sure yet, but definitely brown, white, and black. So how I'm gonna do this, I really don't want these rocks to be the focal point of the painting. I really just want them to give the um, kind of the atmospheric information to this landscape to make the viewer understand that the water is, you know, falling down this kind of cliff type of covey type of area. We're gonna even have trees sitting on top of some of these rocks and everything. So you can make yours into whatever formation that you like, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna construct mine. So I'm gonna start with just brown paint on my brush to give myself like an outline of where I want my rocks to be. So I'm gonna have one kind of up in this right-hand corner. The What I'm also going to be mindful of is where I want my water to be falling. So I'm not going to put too many rocks in front of that because I want my waterfall to kind of fall straight down. If you want your waterfall to kind of bump over the rocks, you can certainly put them elsewhere, but I'm going to primarily be putting mine on the sides. So I'm going to start maybe a couple inches over from here. This I'm going to have like this as a, a rocky kind of area. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a just an outline of sorts where I want this rock to be. And I'm going to do that with all of the rocks that I want. So this will be like the edge of this one. I'm just using brown paint right now to give myself a little bit of a road map. I'm going to have another one kind of coming in this area. I'm going to have a couple down here at the base of the um, little oasis in through here. So you can have as many as you want. I'm just kind of putting them on there, giving myself a little bit of an outline or um, an informational position as to where that I where I want them to be. You can have the top line kind of a little bit cleaner and then you can just get it to blend out a little bit as it's disappearing or dissipating into the darkness. But we, we will um, amplify that in a minute. Just wanna kind of get them in place. So I'm gonna do the same thing over on the left side. So I'm gonna have kind of a rock face coming down in this direction in through here and I'll come back in this left hand area, but this will be kind of the edge of it. And then I think I'm gonna have a couple down in through here. I don't really want them to go much farther out than this one, but maybe a little bit. Um, I'll have maybe one in through here and then maybe another one kind of popping out over there. And again, yours don't have to be exactly in the same position as mine are. You can certainly have as much, maybe this one's gonna be a little bit higher. You can have yours in whatever formation you want. Perhaps I'll have a big one over in through here. Maybe this is more of like a, I don't know, a round rock of sorts. And maybe there's another one down here by the, by the shoreline, so something like this. So once I've got them kind of laid out where I want them, now I'm gonna start adding little bits of highlights to create um, some dimension in them and to give you a little bit of form to them. So the lightest of the canvas or the, the um, light source is coming from above. So I can take the top edges of these rocks and add a little bit of lightness to them in a kind of soft, chaotic way in order to get the viewer to understand that that's the top side of the rock and where um, areas will pop out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, I didn't wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white and a tiny bit of black. So this is gonna give me a combination of brown, gray, some, some form of brownish gray. This will allow me to get natural tones within these, these rocks. So if I want there to be like a little bit of a ledgy area in this rock, in through here, I can put that light color kind of at the top, along the edge a little bit. Maybe I've got a, another little ledge in through here. I can do the same. I've still got that color on my brush, so I can kind of put a little bit of a light spot up in through here, a little ledge like this. If I want it to look like there's um, a part that sticks out, I can put a little put a little bump out. If I want there to look like there's um, like long um, areas to the rock that kind of bump out as they're, as they're coming down towards the next section of earth. I can just kind of rub that out. 
I'm gonna do the same thing up here with these little kind of vertical lines. And then I just kind of rub it out into whatever that neighboring um, darkness is. So this way, it allows me to have these really nice natural tones that just kind of disappear into the darkness. We're going to be um, adding trees and all kinds of other information to this in the in a future step. So right now I'm just kind of getting the rocks in place. I just reloaded my brush with black, brown, and white to do the same thing down in through here. So if I want there to be a little bit of brightness at the tip of this rock and through here, I can certainly go ahead and put a little bit at the tippy top of that. Maybe there's a little flat spot on that rock. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out a little bit. Maybe we've got a little bit over in through here. Maybe we've got a little bit up in through here. The beautiful part about rocks is they're bumpy. So you don't need the, them to have a smoothness to them. What I'm attempting to do is just give the viewer the information kind of where the top of the rock is and maybe where there's a couple of little bumpy spots up above it as well. I'm gonna lighten up the edges of um, a couple of these ones, especially maybe like this one here because it's so close to the top of my canvas. I feel like I wanna add a little bit more lightness to it. So I just added some white and brown to get this a little bit lighter in through here. Maybe we've got a little platform of sorts in through here as well. So you can just kind of keep fiddling and tweaking with it. I'm gonna go ahead and get this left hand side done. So white, brown, and a little bit of black. I'm gonna have this one have a nice platform up at the top. So that would give you like kind of a flatter area if you do a wide kind of um, light spot at the top and you can give it these little bits coming down the side so it looks like it's uh, you know being illuminated at the top and then it kind of fades off away from your light source. And if you do something that's too much, you can always bring back some of the black, but I'm just kind of giving myself a big, huge rock in through here with some light spots and dark spots. I'll do the same thing with this one down here. So again, a little bit of brown, black, and white. I'm not gonna do too much to these guys here because I don't think that, I feel like they are a little bit more in the shadow, but you could certainly give yours as much as you want. And again, you can certainly make them lighter or darker. We're gonna have some um, great trees and stuff on them. I just wanna give a little bit of information that they've got, um, you know, that there's something in here other than just a big black hole of sorts. <laughs> this, this is gonna provide us with much more information. You can even pull this in like this. So maybe this rock looks like it's coming down like that. And of course you can put these little bright spots on the ends if you want to, like they are again kind of catching the light from above. And this is gonna just be kind of a visual preference on your part. I know that for me when I'm doing rocks and stuff like this, I really like to just kind of let them form themselves. I like to just you know carefree move my brush about and almost not think about it too hard because the more I think about it, the more organized it tends to look to me. And I like the, the chaos that mother nature tends to provide all on her own. So if I, if I let my brush be kind of chaotic, it gives me that same feeling when I look at it. So feel free to kind of fiddle with these as much as you want, make more light spots and dark spots. And then when you're done, we're going to be uh, let's see, what are we going to do for the next step? We're going to actually um, switch to our large brush for the next step. So you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our waterfall. I'm going to be using my large brush. The colors that I'm using are brown and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself just a light gray color and that's gonna be the first layer of the waterfall. So for me, whenever I'm building a water type of thing, feature like this, or when I'm building a lot of different stuff, I like to start with the darkest, a darker, or the darkest kind of color underneath first. We have a lot of black underneath, which is gonna provide us with a lot of dimension and depth, but the water itself coming down will also take on some of that look from underneath. So I'm gonna 
use a gray type of color in order to translate that this water is kind of see-through and seeing some of the stuff behind it. And it'll, that'll also give us a little bit more dimension on the water when we're working with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a tiny bit of black paint and I'm gonna mix in some white paint to it. So I don't need this to, I don't need a lot of it and I don't need it to be really too light or too dark. I just kind of want it right middle of the road kind of gray, maybe a little on the lighter side, but you don't need much at all. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up at the top of my waterfall where I want it to be the heaviest and which will be the brightest eventually. And then I'm gonna get it to come down into where I want it to, to land in the water. So I'm gonna have my, um, my waterfall coming out from the top in through here, kind of starting behind this rock and maybe going about ha almost halfway over to the edge of my canvas. I'm gonna bring this first um, brush stroke kind of over and down, which is going to give me the motion of the water coming off of the cliff. So you'll want to show the trajectory of that water. So it's going to come over and down like this. If you feel like you want to have it looking like it's going over, like bumping over some rocks, like if you were to think of this as a rock that the water would bump over, when you get to that part, you can just kind of give it another bump in that direction. And that'll tell the viewer that the water came straight down with gravity, hit something, and, it, and had to go around it. So you can have fun with making those kind of marks if you want to. At this point, I'm not gonna put more paint on my brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my brush in my water, which is going to allow me to have very fluid paint on my brush. And this is going to allow me to um, keep this translucency of the paint as I come down. I'm gonna be bringing it down kind of in a downward gravity is taking over, but in a couple of areas, I'm going to take the paint and just kind of splay it out like it has hit something and it's splaying outside of the water, the main waterfall area. This is a step where less is definitely more. You do not need a lot of paint on your brush. You want to kind of keep the, the mission or the goal in mind, which is the gravity is taking over. I don't want to overpower that the color behind it. I'm going to bring it right down to about here in the water. That's about as far down as I'm doing it. I also want my water to almost look like it's got kind of like a pulsing type of look to it. Like it's um, like it's coming down in um, a forceful kind of way. So what I'm going to do is I like to kind of dab my brush coming down, which will give me this almost like pulsing type of look to the water coming down. Not necessary, just one of those little added dimensional um, things that you can do as you're doing a waterfall to get it to have a little bit of extra um, pizzazz to it and oomph. And then I'm just gonna kind of bring this down. Once I've got it down to the spot I want in the water, then I'm gonna take a little bit of that color and just move it into the water as if it has in fact hit the water and just bring it out a little bit so we've got that aspect of that color incorporated in the water. And I'll also do it in the reflection. So I'm gonna take it just a little bit like this. Again, I'm just using the remnants on my brush, small area here, and then I'm gonna bring it out into a wider area as I'm going towards the bottom of my canvas. So that's gonna be like the reflection of the waterfall. And then we're gonna be utilizing our uh, small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your medium brush or your large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna paint some tree trunks and branches. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white and I'm, prob I'm gonna use some pink and yellow as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put an assortment of sporadic tree trunks and branches throughout my landscape. Again, I don't wanna overdo it, but I'm feeling that this is a springtime um, type of painting, so I'm gonna have some blossoming, pink blossoms on some of these trees, so I wanna put them in some strategic spots. So I'm gonna have a tree up and through here. I'll have one maybe on this little ledge maybe one over on this little ledge and maybe one or two down in through here. I'm gonna have 
my tree trunks, I want them to be nice and visible on top of here, but I don't want them to get confused with the rocks themselves. So I'm gonna kind of pre-mix myself a different type of brown. So I, add, I have my brown in through here, and I'm gonna actually add a little bit of pink and a little bit of yellow to it. So this will make it more of like a, um, a rusty type of color, which will make it stand out a little bit different than the colors that we have here. So just giving myself a little bit different of a colored brown. You could certainly make yours into whatever you want. You could even just add a little bit of white to it if you wanted to. And then I will use this plus black and white as I go through the process. But I'm gonna start up in through here. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a tree trunk up in through here. I like to have my tree trunks a little bit wider at the base so they look like they've got um, a little bit of age to them and um, width. I just added a little bit of black paint on my brush so I can get some dimension in through here. And of course you can use um, your regular brown if you want to. I'm just using an assortment of browns and grays to get the um, the base of it on here. I am going to be putting a um, leaves on the top of it, so I'm really not concerned about the top being overly exciting um, because I'm gonna be covering it with some leaves. I'm gonna do one in through here, so I think I'm gonna have this one. I don't necessarily want it directly underneath that one, so I think I'm gonna put it a little bit to the right of this one and bring it down we'll make the ledge right in through here. We're gonna do little pieces of grass and stuff too. I'm adding a little bit of white with that custom brown right now so we can kind of get this these um, branches to show up just a little bit more. And of course, you can certainly have as much fun with these um, trees as you want to. You can have yours really noticeable or really, um, you know, kind of, just subtle. It'll be totally up to you how how um, bright or dark that you want them to be. And just kind of keep fiddling with these colors. If you want them, again, lighter or darker, I just added a bit more yellow. So this one stood out a little bit more. And then just kind of getting that color to blend in a little bit. I'm going to have another one over in through here. So again, using that custom brown to start it off for me. And this one's gonna be a little bit on the bigger side. We'll have this one kind of coming over in through here. Maybe we've got a nice solid base in through here and then maybe a nice trunk coming up in through here. And of course, as you're doing this, just be mindful that you want your tree to not fall off the cliff. <laughs> so just kind of make sure that it's standing up enough um, if you wanna add, some, like I wanna add a little branch coming off over there, just make sure it looks pretty balanced. If you've gotta add an extra branch off to the side to make it look balanced, just that's kind of the, the trick with trees is to make them look like they're not falling over, especially when you're putting, on a, putting them on a, on a cliff like we are. I added a little bit more black to my brush so I could have a little bit more dimension. Now I added a little bit more white. So I'm really just kind of playing with the lightness and the darkness of these um, of the tree trunks and the branches to make sure that they're visible in front of the um, in front of the the backdrop. We again we're going to be putting some um, branch or uh, leaves and all that kinds of good stuff, but this is just going to kind of get it started so we can see it. And then I'm going to put a little um, maybe like a little bush type of uh, foliage thing down here. So I'm using that custom um, brown with maybe a little bit of white paint on my brush. Maybe this is gonna kind of scoot in between this little rock in through here. Maybe this is just gonna kind of be a couple of little um, skinny type of twig branches coming in through here to maybe it's just popping up behind this rock somewhere in through here. And then you can certainly fiddle with these as much as you want. We're gonna be using our large brush for the next step. So you can add more of these if you want. Maybe maybe we've got one. Nah, I'm just gonna put this, I'm gonna put bushes over here. So I think this is gonna be good for me. And then once you've got this done, you can put this small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the first layer of the leaves on our trees. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I'm gonna use green, brown, pink, and maybe some yellow too. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm really going to just kind of lay out where I want these trees to be um, or bushes for that matter and what is the color of them going to be. So when I think of a spring tree, I think a lot of times that it has green with a pink type of color if it's a blossoming spring tree. So I'm going to do an assortment of regular green trees like evergreen trees as well as blossoming springtime trees. So I'm going to start with just green and brown on my big brush at the same time. This is gonna be the outer areas um, of leaves that come in. Now I have a black background and I'm not using paint that has a lot of opacity in it, so it will be brighter when it's wet and it'll dry darker. So I'm gonna start in through this side area and I'm just gonna say, oh, well, maybe there's a tree kind of coming out from this side, maybe there's a little bit on the side of this rock. I'm not doing much at all, just really kind of giving the implication that there's some trees over on the exterior working their way into this little cove of sorts, maybe hiding the edge of a, of a rock if I need to. You can even put a little bit at the edge of the rock, like there's a little bit of grass in through there. This tree I'm going to have is one of my pinker trees, so I'm just going to give some of this green stuff um, behind it to imply that it's part of the forest over here on the left hand side. And you don't have to fill in all of the areas, I'm just kind of sporadically dabbing this, giving it the implication that these this is some greenery. I'm going to bring it right up past my original footprint into my sky a little bit. That's going to um, give me some good diversity in the, in the colors. Um, and then I'm going to, I think I'm going to have a little bit of like a little grassy area up in through here. So I'm just putting a little bit of that green and brown in through here, rubbing it left to right. I think this is going to be covered by a pink bush. I'm going to go over on the right hand side. I'm going to do some of this green and brown as the top to this tree. I'm going to put maybe some little yellow blossoms on this one um, as I'm, when I do my second layer, but we're just going to put this greenish color in through here like that and again I'm just picking up green and brown right now this is a nice neutral base for the for um, the the greenery I'm gonna put some on this tree in through here so again I'm not overdoing it just kind of allowing myself to have this base coat for these pretty trees maybe this one has some little grass and stuff at the edge I know I said I was first layer of leaves, but we can do grass too. <laughs> Maybe we're gonna have some grass on our on our rocks. I'm gonna have some coming over here just again to give me the implication that this is the, you know, something over off of my canvas will pull these exterior things will pull the viewer's eye and attention right into the middle of the canvas for us. And then I got this little guy right down in through here. I think I'm gonna have this one in the pink vicinity so I'm going to leave him for a minute. I've got still that little bit of green on my brush. Maybe we've got a little bushes in through here. Maybe we've got some little grass over here just going to fly over to the other side for a minute here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to oop, put a little grass here too. <laughs> you can put grass wherever you want. Um, so I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to go into where I want some pink areas to be. So I'm washing and drying my brush. The base coat where I'm going to have my pink blossoms, I'm actually going to use pink and brown. So you could pre-mix this if you wanted like a little magenta e color or just pick them both up at the same time. It'll get, it'll provide you with a nice deep tone for the base coat of your pink trees. So I'm just dabbing wherever I want those leaves to be that are going to be my bright spring laden leaves and you can overlap any green areas that you want. You can have it a big tree or a small tree, whatever is appealing to you and you don't necessarily want it to just be super round so that's why I've got some branches coming out um, and making a little bit of an asymmetrical type of display maybe a little colorful bush up in through here I'm gonna put some down at the base of this tree in through here like maybe there's some flowers that are starting to bloom at the bottom of here and I'm not concerned if it's um, see-through right now because I have a second layer that I'm gonna put in a little while a little flowers down there I'm gonna have this little guy down in through here it's gonna be nice and pink so again have fun with putting these wherever you want they're gonna it's gonna look a little bit darker once it dries but this is just kind of setting the stage for where we want these pink areas maybe there's a little bit of pink over in through here too and then maybe we've got a little bit 
over in through here. And then while I have um, this pink on my brush, if you have bushes that are close to the water area, you can do a tiny bit of a little reflection in the water, but just the ones that are close. You really don't need to do the ones that are up top because you wouldn't really see it, in my opinion, you wouldn't see the reflection of them. They'd be way off into in a, in a farther off position. Maybe we see this one just a little bit somewhere in through here. And then I'm going to be utilizing um, this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your leaves done, you can wash and dry the large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our trees and any foliage areas that we want to have. So I'm gonna use my large brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are green, yellow, white, pink. Mm, and that might be it. If I use more, I'll let you know. So I'm in essence gonna be going over the same areas that I just went over in the last step, only I don't want to cover up all of these dark little regions. I want to just put highlights on them. So when I go to, let's say, do this pink tree, I'm going to still see some of these little dark spots underneath it. So less is more. You don't need a lot of paint and um, a more controlled thought where the lighter parts are going to be towards the top of each of these objects. So I'm going to start with my green ones first. So for my highlighted colors for my green areas, I will use green yellow and white. You can pre-mix yourself a light green, you can use them on your brush at the same time, whatever works. I pre-mix myself a little bit of a light green and then I'll also use green, yellow, and white just so I can have some different tones and shades and stuff in through there. So I have my light green. I definitely know that the stuff at the top would be the lightest because it's the closest to the light source. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of my light green in through here. And again, you don't need to do the whole thing, just enough to kind of tell the story of where the highlights would be. And they would be to the top and to the left, indicating where that light source is. If this is grass, maybe I think I want a little bit more yellow down on this grass. So it adds a little bit more value to it. So I just added a little bit more yellow on my brush. Um, in through here, this is kind of going off into the um, the forest a little bit. So I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. So I have hardly any paint on my brush. When I'm doing these kind of highlights, um, I am very mindful of what's closest to the sun and what's not. So if you want it to look a little bit more natural, the, um, the best thing to do is to have it to go darker and darker as it gets farther away from the sun. So if you do it and you get too much, just bring back maybe some of that green and the brown to just make it a little bit darker to show that it's a little bit further away. That's looking pretty good. I think actually I'm gonna put a little yellow and white up in that top tree up to the right. So I'm using, I just picked up yellow and white on my brush so I can get this one to maybe look like it's got a little bit more sunshine on these, on these tips in through here and then maybe on this tree to the little top there. So then I'm gonna come, I've got this little grassy piece in through here. So I've got uh, yellow and white on my brush right now just to give myself a little bit of this um, grass, like it's got a little bit of sunshine on this grassy area up and through here. Maybe a touch more green too, just to make it really look like it's grass. And then I've got that green, yellow, and white on my brush at the same time, just gonna kind of pop in a little bit of sunshine on the tips of these branches, whatever they may be. This might be a tree, it might be a bush, whatever you imagine it to be is totally fine. These guys in through here, I wouldn't get much because they're so far away from that sun right now, but maybe just a little bit of a um, little tip of green and yellow, not much white on my brush, maybe a little tiny bit in through here. So you can see I'm really not doing much when it comes to these highlights. Just wanna give the impression that there is some kind of dimension within these, um, within the aspects of these pieces of foliage. So you can have fun with that. I'm gonna switch to my, um, to my pink areas now. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna be using my um, pink and white. So 
I'm going to take a little bit of white and just kind of mix it in with some of my pink. So this way I'm going to progressively kind of get lighter and lighter as I go towards the um, ends of it. I don't need a lot of paint on my brush, so I put it on my brush and then I kind of wiped it off so I don't have a lot, but I definitely want to have some on there and I will progressively get it lighter and lighter, but just kind of tapping it in towards the areas that I want to have a little bit of that um, vibrance into it. And if you want to, you can bring back some of that original color, like I just picked up some of that um, pink plus the brown as well in order to get a little bit deeper of a color in through here so it's not too soft of a tone which um, I was finding that just the pink and the white was a little bit too soft so I added a little bit more of that um, fluorescent pink and a touch of brown on my brush so you can alter it at any time if you're going about it and you say oh that's a little bit too light or oh that's a little bit too dark just change it on the fly. Right now I just have um, the pink plus a little brown and a little tiny bit of white on my brush. So I've got all three of those colors on my brush in order to give me these different tonal values throughout this bush. And I'm going to do the same thing up in through here because that base color ends up nice and well, ended up nice and dark for me. So adding kind of this progressive highlight to it. So I'll, I'll probably pop in a little bit Bright, brighter brightness on it in a minute, but I just want to make sure that we do have this pink represented in the, in the entire tree so we don't lose any of the tree in the darkness. But again, you can certainly have fun with this. I'm picking up some of that light pink that we created, the pink and the white, to give myself just a couple more pops of brightness on these little tips. So as I do it, you know, it dries a little bit and then I say, oh, I want a little bit more there or I want it a little bit brighter there. So my key is to just not overdo it. When I'm, when I'm going into these um, highlights of trees like this I, I, and bushes, I don't want it to overwhelm the, um, the visual aspect of it. So I just kind of progressively um, get it to go lighter and lighter as I'm working my way towards the... Um, towards the exterior branches of it. And then you just kind of keep fiddling with it until you've got it where you want. Um, at this point, I will, for the ones that are close to the water, I'll put a little bit of that reflection in the water as well. Um, so I can just stay true to having the whole thing painted and having all of the, um, the elements in there. I think I needed that one to be a little bit fuller. There we go. And then I'm gonna come down and put a tiny bit in this little reflection so I see that it should be a little bit lighter on that right hand side to mimic what's up above so I just making sure that I have a little bit more of that lightness on the right hand side in the reflection so I'll do the same thing over in through here so I have a little bit of the white and the pink on my brush and then at any time when you go towards that the opposing side you can start picking up the darker shade of it so it just looks like a nice natural reflection and then we're going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step so once you get your beautiful trees done you can wash and dry this uh, large brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the waterfall. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are primarily white, but I may go into some of that um, blue, custom blue that we made, or a little bit of the gray, or a little bit of the black. <laughs> Mostly white though, but just in case I need any of the other colors, just wanna forewarn you. So what I'm in essence gonna do, I'm never gonna use a lot of paint on my brush. I'm gonna be doing the same trajectory that I did the initial time, only this time I'm gonna be using mostly white. I wanna make sure that I don't cover all of this color that I had um, on here initially. The dominant um, area where I'm gonna put the white is up in through here, and then I'll just bring little pieces of the white down through the middle of the waterfall and then end up with it splashing in here and then we'll do a little reflection. So I'm gonna start with white paint on my brush, but I'm going to wipe I'm going to put a little bit of white paint on my brush and then I wipe it off on the side of my palette. So this way I know that I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. These brushes I use are, are nice and firm so they can pull the paint pretty darn far. 
I want this to look like it's coming out from wherever the water source is over there on the right hand side. So I'm just kind of starting up at the top, making sure I've got some little bumps and stuff as if it's spraying out right along the edge. You can even get it to kind of splay out or spray out as it's coming over the edge in through here. So you can certainly get some little dots going as it's coming out that edge. And then I'm just gonna kind of start pulling it in this direction, kind of to the left and bringing it down. Um, gravity will take over in a minute, but just gonna bring a little bit down in this direction that I had before. So here's that little spot that it hits this rock and then we can kind of pull it down in this direction. If you're feeling like your paint is too dry, you can pick up more white or you can pick up a tiny bit of water on your brush. So the water on your brush will allow you to have kind of smoother type of strokes without overdoing the white. You can always add more white to the equation as you go along, but it's really tough to kind of back it off. So I, can use, I like to use a little bit of water on my brush just to kind of control the thickness and make sure I don't kind of overdo it. And then once I've kind of got it I think I want a little bit more white up in through here. Once I've got the lightest area as light as I want, and you can see I'm leaving little dark spots in between, then I can start just kind of pulling it down into my um, main area of the waterfall. And again, I'm gonna give it these little kind of pulsing type of marks. And again, I'm not overdoing it. I'm really just proceeding with caution so I don't overdo it. I hardly have any paint on my brush right now, making sure that I leave some of those um, dark spots within it so it looks nice and natural. And we've got um, just kind of pulling it down. You don't have to pull it exactly on the same spots that you did the first time, but just allowing it to have this kind of natural trajectory and fall from the big rock above it will make it look nice and natural. And then I'll get it to go a little bit lighter. I'll put a little bit more lightness down at the bottom as it's reaching the water as if it's kind of the, um, the base down here as if it's, um, you know, kind of got a little bit more volume as it's, as it's meeting in through here. So just kind of moving my brush left to right, giving myself these uneven kind of ripply edges as it dissipates into the neighboring area. I'm gonna give myself a couple of little splashes coming up too. Not a lot, again, just a little bit to um, make sure it looks nice and authentic. Like when it hits the water, it splashes up a little bit. You could, if you wanted to, you could, if the white is kind of too white for you, this is the time where you could pick up a touch of your um, your watercolor to intermingle that with the splashes so that way it doesn't all look white on you. You could use a little bit of your gray as well, the gray that we created for the original um, fall itself. So, And you can even put some of this blue in the water as it's coming down as well. So that's, you know, it, ways that you can make the um, the water itself look like it's got a little bit more dimension in it. So just Proceed with caution, keep fiddling with it. Once you've got it as um, filled in as you want, we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So I'm probably gonna just step back away from mine, look at it from a distance, see if there's anything more that I want to add to it. And then I will um, put this large brush away. I got a little bit of that blue on my brush. I wanna cover that up with some white. I will put this large brush away take out my small brush and if I can ever stop this. <laughs> I love, I like making these little marks coming down here. Um, and then, so put the big brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint ourselves a person in the water. So I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are black, brown, yellow, pink, and white and probably some of my watercolor too because I'm gonna be doing the reflections and stuff. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a skin color. So I have magically pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed, but I'll show you how I got there. So I mixed some of my pink, some of my yellow, a little bit of my brown, 
and a little bit of white. And I just started spinning them around. About equal parts of each will get you going in the right direction. And then I spin them around until they're nice and blended. And then I can start adjusting it if I feel I need to. So I feel like I want a little bit more deepness in that. So I'm going to put a little bit more yellow and pink in it. And that's looking pretty good to me. I like to utilize my own skin as a visual reference. Um, some, I tend to make my paint a little bit darker than my actual skin, but that's a nice starting point that I can have. Maybe we need a little bit more white in here just to make it a little bit lighter. Um, and then once you've got the color that is appealing to you, what we're going to do is we are going to make ourselves a a basic shape for the figure. I'm going to have mine really small as if it's way far off in the distance in this beautiful cove. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first make myself a horizontal line that's almost about two inches tall. I'm going to have mine a little bit to the left of the center of my canvas. You can really have yours anywhere you want, but I'm going to put mine right about here and I'm just going to make myself a horizontal line. That's going to tell me the top of her head, the, you know, the height that I want her at. She's going to be submersed in the water a bit. So I'm going to come down about a third of the way down this um, line. And this is going to be where I'll refer to her shoulders. I'm going to give the exterior um, profile of her body is going to be kind of like an hourglass type of shape. So we're going to come in and then out. And then I'll do the same thing over on the left side. So I come in from the shoulder a little bit and then out for the hips. I'm going to color this whole area in with my skin tone. So something like this. I'm going to have her with long hair that she's going to, um, that's going to kind of strategically be hiding her hands. <laughs> so uh, when I do her head, I really don't need to do much other than give it like an oval type of a shape. So if this is um, the top of my head, I'm just going to kind of bring it out a little bit to the right and then back down towards that shoulder area and do the same thing over on the left hand side. Just bring it out just a little bit and back down towards that shoulder area. Then I need to put her arms on. So I, I'm going to have her with her arms kind of behind her head, maybe with her hands underneath her hair. So I like to use myself as a reference as far as like body parts. So if I put my arm up in the air with my head behind my, with my hand behind my head, my elbow is about the same height, maybe a little higher or a little lower than the top of my head. So that's where I'm going to put the, her elbow. I'm going to put it a little bit further out than her hip. So if I come up from her hip, to where the top of her head is and then just out just a little bit to the right. That can be the corner of the elbow. Then I'm going to give um, a diagonal line towards her head like this. That's going to represent her forearm. And then I'm going to bring this down and connect it with this shoulder area in through here. So that's going to give me her arm with it looking like it's kind of behind the head. The shoulder can be a little bit wider than the actual elbow part. So if you want to bump up out the, the um, bicep a little bit, you can certainly do that. That will work. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So if this is her hip, I'm going to come straight up from the hip to where her head is and go out just a little bit to the left somewhere in here. And they don't have to be exactly the same position on both sides, just somewhere in that general vicinity will get you going. And then I'm going to do a diagonal line towards her head for her forearm. And then I'll do a diagonal line towards her um, shoulder in through here for that side of her arm. And of course, you can kind of do any little modifications that you feel are necessary for the um, getting it into the shape that you want. And then I'm just kind of thinning out any thick spots so this paint will dry on the quicker side for me. And then I'm going to go down into um, the water and I'm going to give the reflection of her body in the water. So I'm going to have it um, kind of going towards a little bit to the right. So I'm going to put just a little bit 
in through here. This is the same, just her skin color that I'm using. I'm gonna make it a little bit more narrow as it comes farther away from her, as if it's kind of being skewed and elongated in the reflection itself. And then I'll get it to kind of go a little bit wider. I'm gonna put her head near the bottom over here. So I'm gonna consider this to be kind of her shouldery area. Then um, her arms are gonna pop out a little bit. And then we got along with her head somewhere in through here. So you can see I've kind of skewed it a little bit. It's, you know, wider. It's got um, a little bit more um, wiggle to it, obviously, with the ripples in the water. So that's going to do that for me. I'm going to wash and dry my brush right now, and I'm going to put brown paint on it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start giving myself um, her hair and any little um, shadowy areas that I want for her body. So I have just brown paint on, on my brush right now and I'm going to um, pull it down through this area where I want her hair, where I want it to look like it is her hair. So I'm going right over the skin tone. Even if the skin color is still a little bit wet, that's fine. You can just um, brought paint, paint right through it. I'm gonna have her hair coming all the way down to the water or thereabouts, somewhere close to, to that region. Yours doesn't have to be as long as mine. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. You can certainly make yours whatever way that you want. Then I'm gonna wipe my brush off. I'm gonna pick up some black paint in order to give a shadow behind her or underneath her hair. So I've got a little bit of black paint on my brush, just providing myself with a little bit of shadow underneath her hair so it really looks like it's got some um, some dimension to it. I'm also going to put a tiny bit of this black underneath or at the um, like where her wrist enters underneath her um, hair so something right along here. I'm considering my light source to be up at the um, top of my canvas so I definitely um, am thinking that all my shadows and stuff are going to be on the bottom side of these pieces of the um, of the body and the, the bottom and the back side of them. I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown paint right now, give her some shadows along her sides of her back, somewhere in through here. So this is, again is just going to kind of show the contour of her back as well and then maybe a little bit down towards her um, rear end where it is meeting the water in through here. I want a little shadow on the back side of her arms. So I just have hardly any paint on my brush right now and it's mostly just brown and I'm really just kind of rubbing in a little bit of a shadow on the back side of her skin where I feel that um, it would be the darkest. I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white paint right now to put a highlight on the top of her head. I'm gonna make her hair a little bit darker in a second, but I'm gonna put just a little bit of white paint on my brush so I can get this, oops, I need to wash my brush. I had some other color on there unexpectedly. So washed and dried my brush, picked up some white paint, and I'm gonna get just this bright highlight right at the top of her head in through here, and then I'm gonna pull it back in a curved kind of way to show the direction of her hair, something like that. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of this white paint as a little highlight on her, the, the corner of her elbow maybe, up in through here, maybe a little bit down her forearm. These tiny little highlights really help to sell the story of where the light is coming from. Maybe a tiny touch on the inside of her um, shoulders, maybe a little bit on her hip. So you can really kind of um, accentuate certain aspects of lighting and things of that nature by adding these bits of highlights um, in these areas that would show very well. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I want her hair a little bit darker. So I'm washing and drying my brush, picking up some brown paint. I want her hair to definitely read as a different color than her skin, so I just picked up a little bit more brown paint to get it a little darker. Maybe a touch of black too, so 
That way, again, I really want it a little bit darker than her skin, so I just added a little bit more black and brown. And of course, you could have your hair whatever color you want. If you want yours even darker or lighter, feel free to do so. Picking up a little bit more black to um, accentuate the shadow alongside of her hair. So sometimes I just kind of keep fiddling with these highlights and shadows just to make sure that as they dry, they, they're reading the way that I want them to. They're saying exactly what it is I want them to say. So I really want it to look like she is really being lit up by the sun. So in order to have it read as such, I need to have these deep, dark shadows behind her. So I just kind of keep um, adding them until it is telling m me and the viewer exactly what it is I want it to. I think I put a little bit too much darkness on that right arm, so I'm picking up a tiny bit of my skin color just to re-identify the color back there. So that's looking pretty good to me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make that reflection. So I'm going to use the, of those details we just did. So I'm going to start with some brown because that was her hair, so I'm going to Put, I put some brown on my brush and I'm going to make her hair coming all the way up to her head. I'm going to pick up some black paint now to insinuate the shadowy area that we had um, done along the sides of her hair, something like this. I'm going to pick, I'm washing and drying my brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit I think I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that skin color so it can be a little bit more pronounced on, on these sides and through here, and then maybe a touch more white. I am gonna pick up, um, I am gonna do a little bit more of the reflection of the waterfall in a minute too, but right now I'm just kind of concentrating on what um, information I want for the reflection of her. So again, just kind of little bits of the white on the top of the head to make it look like it's highlighted like I, like it is in all actuality. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna finish up my reflection of the um, waterfall and then do a little splashes around her and we'll be all done. So I'm picking up some of my um, pre-mixed blue plus some white and I'm just, I'm gonna move my canvas just a little bit here so I can access it a little bit better. I've got both the light um, pre-mixed blue and some white on my brush and just kind of giving this real nice light area in the middle to represent that it is the reflection perhaps of the waterfall itself and just intermingling it in with um, her reflection as well so it looks like it's all rippled and it's got sparkles and it's got um, movement to it and just getting it to go right into where she is at the waterfall in through here and then I'm gonna pick up some more white paint to get right at her body I want to make sure that I've got some nice um, water rippling right around that area in through there so this is just white on my brush right now giving myself some really bright white ripples right around her body to show that she's creating some of the movement in the water along with the waterfall itself and that there's lots of little sparkles and stuff and then you can certainly take this white and move it out a little bit if you feel like you want to make some more splashes right around her you can certainly just take this bright white and just dibble, dab in some little polka dots of sorts here and there maybe within these little um, areas that are already splashing up. You could even have a couple of little pieces of water just kind of splashing off of her elbows like as it's coming down from the waterfall it's hitting her shoulders or even the top of her head and just splashing up just a little bit but you hardly need any paint on your brush to do this. I mean I really have a tiny bit and I'm just kind of lightly dabbing it and then I would just you know fiddle a little bit more so I would let this dry for a second see if there's any more adjustments that I want to do any more reflections in my water I could certainly incorporate that and then once I feel like I'm all set I am going to be using this same brush for the next step so I will just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right I'm going to be using my small brush I'm using black paint and I'm going to sign this one over in the bottom left. I sign mine with my initials, 
but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or your date or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting, you get to sign it however you'd like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful spring landscape oasis type of painting. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.